Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me on another of my wonderful interviews. Now, by popular demand, ladies and gentlemen, I have a gentleman who's going to come back. Um, he was on, I suppose, about six weeks, something like that ago. Um, and he is back again. And I'm very thrilled to have him because we're going to be talking about how to emulate nature with understanding how everything's connected. We're cleaning our inner world and um, we're going to find out if uh, mocking the system is a good policy and also what he's now doing on YouTube. So I shall be doing my Gestapo impression. What are you doing on YouTube? Get off! No, not that sort of thing. It's Rob Babalu Joy. Um, Rob, welcome back to the show. Bless you, Richard. Thank you very much for having me back. And thank you to the to the people who've asked me to come back. That's uh, it's, wonderful. It is lovely to have you. Uh, no, but people have been very kind on all my guests and they say we must have them back because I think sometimes an hour isn't long enough in conversations. But if, if you put, I've learned, if you put longer than an hour, you know, people can spare an hour and sit down. They're cooking, whatever. They can listen to conversation. If you say it's three hours, they might say, oh, actually, do you know what? I'm going to the cinema. So, um, it's, so it's nice to bring people back. Um, and we spoke about a lot of um, interesting stuff. And I know that you're on a, a, a hugely, you, well, not so much on the journey. You are a very uh, spiritual uh, gentlemen, and I'm sort of understanding all of that myself. I've been on, I'm at the sort of beginning of that journey. And so the conversations we have are very important. Um, and I like the fact that you're saying, and I've written some notes down here, um, cleaning the inner world. So maybe we could start with that. What do you mean by cleaning the inner world? Well, so last time we did touch on a lot of, you know, how does, how do we recognize what is from what is not? In mm. itself and uh you know it's a touchy subject area because a lot of people are still sort of believing that something else is out there that's gonna um that has authority that is gonna come and fix all of our problems like a messiah or a, a savior of some kind mm. um and in religious terms you know this could be the hindus waiting for for krishna or the uh the buddhists waiting for um someone else or the christians waiting for jesus or the um uh, the Muslims waiting for someone, you know, and 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 different different uh, sort of eras of these um, very conscious individuals who did come and and share a message. Uh, and through my own life, I've been sort of cultivating um, my own message. Uh, I don't know if you ever uh, have become familiar with a guy called Joseph Campbell. I know of John Campbell, but I'm su suspecting that's a different Campbell. That's a very um, different Campbell, yeah. And indeed, uh, Glenn Campbell. But okay. uh, <laughs> that's a different... No, so the answer, the simple answer is no. Well, Joseph Campbell talked very much about um, the hero's journey. So you go off into the world, you have your experiences, and very much you're doing the work for yourself. You're learning and you're gathering information and you're... Uh, coming to new realizations, new points of view, and mm. when you do this, uh, you're you're also changing your perspective on how reality works, how everything operates, and what is maybe a fallacy compared to what is a objective truth. And eventually, you you've completed that little part of your journey, so you come back to where you came from in this life. Uh, for me, being in the UK, uh, having gone, you know, a lot around the world on this journey to then give back by sharing your message. Now, it will resonate with some and it won't with others. And that's always going to be the case. You know, haters will hate, uh, but you can't let them distract from your message because yeah. if you do, then your whole life has been... Um, I don't know how to put that, but, you know, your life has not been meaningful. Um, but, I, but I'm guessing that everybody's going to have their own personal message because they're all on their own personal journey. And so, one absolutely. Size, you know, we know that one size doesn't fit all from the uh, the world government situation. You know, one one world government is obviously not a good thing for um, individual men and women. I have to be so careful how I phrase everything. So I imagine that uh, everybody's on some form of hero journey, but they may not realize what they're learning perhaps 
Yes. So it is about becoming conscious of the fact that actually your message, your piece of the puzzle, if you will, is very important. There's no such thing as big or small in this world. Everyone has a unique part of the puzzle of hmm. humanity in the larger picture. Uh, and for me, you know, uh, I've been blessed to, to spend time in indigenous cultures and, and with tribes and learn from those that have kept knowledge that has otherwise since been um, lost even mm. on purpose because those that I would call the predatory psychopathic parasitical class not yeah. to give them the name that they want and I won't no. even mention it no uh, they they have the occult knowledge now occult just means hidden yes uh, and it was never meant to be hidden it's meant for everyone because we're all divine sparks of the godhead in my view I I feel that I'm mm. open to changing my mind. I won't say I believe it because when you say you believe something, you're putting yourself in a box where you can't accept any new information. So I always try and say to people, implore people to use the word feel. And it's all about coming back to your feeling. So when we're talking about cleaning house and cleaning mm. your inner world, when we put good things in, we give good things out. And I would suggest that the nature of reality is an inside job. So what we um, learn through becoming, well, slowing down and becoming more still and observing nature and seeing how things operate, how everything is interdependent. There's no such thing as independent in nature. Everything exists because of a relationship with something else. Yeah. And uh when we do that we can we can quite clearly see the uh the, the idea that the main issue or the main challenge the main problem i don't like the word problem so try and leave it as something that we can uh cultivate a solution from a challenge is mm. the idea that we're all separate from ourselves from each other from the universe from nature and so on and so on but the one solution to that the overarching solution if you will is to recognize that we're all actually one because we are interconnected we're interdependent and if there's a cell in your body for example that is sick then you want to heal that cell because without that cell being healed some part of all of you is sick right so similarly if you extrapolate from that that's the microcosm of the individual self to the macrocosm of the collective self then you want everyone in the world to be healthy because if one person is sick, then the rest of us are still right. yeah. ill. And this is how the belief in unity works or the feeling of unity works because yes. the, it's interchangeable again. You know, it's impossible not to kill something in your life. You know, you're going to be walking on the earth with little microbes and ants and things. But and snails and snails and that's slugs the, that, and, you, you know, know things that aren't that. Snails bad. are the one for me. You go out in the rain. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? You and they the come front. out right by your door. And <laughs> and I do you know I've I, I know this is a little sort of light-hearted story, but. Um, I have gone to save a snail from my log pile by placing him somewhere out because I was taking the logs. Accidentally knocked a bloody log and it's fell down and crushed him. And I uh, just thought to myself, well, if there is somebody separate from me looking after all these creatures, you've not done a very good job because I didn't mean to do that. Uh, so, yes, you're quite right. We do inadvertently, accidentally. Um, I mean, some people obviously do it maliciously and kids, of course, they don't really understand what they're doing and they'll pull the legs off spiders and things but then eventually hopefully you get to a point where you go okay I've learned that that's not really a nice thing to do well absolutely and you know it's a sort of rule of thumb if you will that uh when it, as we've just been talking about if you kill something else you're you're really upsetting the balance that yeah. exists within natural law and um this in the world uh where we're at now um, and I'll talk a lot about this, about paradox. So uh, you'd think, and you'd be right to a certain extent to say that because of the lack of morals that are existing right now, there's chaos in the world. And yes, there's a lot of chaos. We can all see that quite clearly. Mm. But simultaneously with that, we are all actually also experiencing a lot more control. So, you Con know, all of control outside control, do you mean? Outside top down authoritarian yeah. control coming back. So, yes. you know, I would say we're all 
playing as fractals of of a godhead you know consciousness being all that was all it is all it ever will be yeah and we've created this game for ourselves which is highly genius because going back to that point about how when we are not acting in self-responsibility self-love which includes the other and all groups among us be it humans animals arthropods <laughs> mammals of all kinds that yeah. reach everything the environment when we do that the top-down control will always kick in because there's a there's a balance to be found so the control is to remind us of our personal responsibility to remind us of the fact that freedom isn't free it comes with a degree of i would say sacredness where we have to look after this sacred thing the life mm. life in its entirety uh and yes of course you know it's impossible not to kill anything but as a general rule of thumb i think i hope that when you grow through your your childhood that you learn that uh, uh, generally things are better when you when you when you don't harm others, and it's it's been the biggest thing, hasn't it, in every religious text that they say, "Do unto thy neighbour as you expect to you," or in other words, the golden rule: do no harm. Mm. And that how does how, how do you how does that equate if you are say a carnival? Well, everything in nature eats itself. You know the uh, Ouroboros, right. the snake eating its own tail. So, so there is that you, we all do that. But you can honour life. You know, right. you give animals a good life. Um, and I know this is a touchy subject area too. Because well, the- I, I just wanted to, in case somebody from was saying, "Oh, does that mean you know if you can't harm anything, you you have to be a vegan?" That, I guess that's the the thought behind that question. Sure, sure. So, well. Again, as I was saying, this is a touchy mm. subject area and vegans don't kill me, but hopefully you wouldn't because you respect and honour life. But veganism... Only has... kill him if you're going to eat him. That's, you know, and <laughs> yes, then, of course, every vegans... part or you every vegans, part. Yeah. You know, uh... And then vegans couldn't eat you. They couldn't kill you because <laughs> they couldn't eat you. So, you know, it's a, it's a great rule. Sorry, I interrupt. But yes, yeah, so, so at that point, uh, we do... Nature exists because, again, it's interdependent. We, we can't yes. survive without eating at this i mean there is such a thing as a breatharium but uh those prepared to go to do the work to get to that point are very few and far between as are the ones that um will attain something like christ consciousness so when people right. talk about jesus coming back it's not a one individual being in my mind at this point i'm open to having that changed if anyone can give me um better wisdom than i've accrued and that is that uh, we can all achieve what Jesus achieved or what the Buddha achieved or what Krishna achieved or any of these beings that came yes. before us when we do the work. But it's all on the self. And this, again, cycling back to hmm. how we um, need to clean our own houses, our inner house, and put good things in so that you get good things out. If you're not doing that and you... Um, are still in this, uh, what do they say? It's uh, great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss, um, hang on, I've got it written down. I'll just, because I've I've written quite a lot down for today, knowing that, uh, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, Yeah, knowing that I would derail you (laughs) with my my nonsense. Yeah, that happens. Average minds discuss events and small minds discuss people. So gossip, blame, Yeah, you know, it's been a very much a, a blame culture of you know, well, if only they'd have done what they said they were going to do. But when people say, "Oh, I'm a good person," what does that actually mean? Mm. How are you gauging the fact? Yeah, that who's who's person? judging that? Yes, uh, and the ultimate judge is yourself. No, nothing outside of you, right? You know, so you only you and you alone know if you are doing what you say you're going to do, if you're honouring your word, if you're keeping your promises, if you're. Mm acting in accordance with natural law and the balance and harmony of nature, or if you're stepping outside of that and hiding things and operating in your shadow, not looking at why, not not searching for your triggers and why you may feel jealous of others or uh, insecure of others' thoughts or beliefs or feelings. Uh, and that, again, in terms of cleaning in a house, means you need to look at your triggers. You need to, to search out, especially with family, 
because mm. uh, very obviously, you know, with siblings, especially th that we're just ultimately at opposite ends of the spectrum m m much of the time um, where totally different belief systems uh, from one another and uh, living in a family household brings all of that to the surface because you're communicating always and uh well hopefully and yeah, i was gonna uh, say you know, yeah. <laughs> you're stuck on the phone 24 7 or on your computer and um yeah so when when these conflicts of ideas and points of view and everything arise it's uh it's a very good idea in my mind in my heart in my feeling to look to the self not to the other because mm. whatever's bothering you is it's not outside it it's in you it's not mm. the person's fault or the other being's fault let's not use the word person mm um and this this will lead me specifically to what i think is going to be the most sort of unpopular thing i'm going to say today which is right all around the whole religious idea that uh, we just touched on around someone coming to save us and all we have to do is is believe and our sins will be forgiven and all of this stuff now again i'm open to having my mind changed i don't want to um convince anyone this is just how i feel in this moment yeah. Um, you're not you're not purposely setting out to offend anybody absolutely. based on an offense is taken rather than given it just you know exactly little, little caveat there to yeah. smooth the waters a bit yes if that's as opposed possible. as opposed to part the waters anyway yeah uh, and uh so so we have a lot of um this with religious scriptures where i would say they've been manipulated in order that the parasitical psychopathic predatory class know that with the occult knowledge they they need us to manifest their reality for them so they manipulate the text to get us to behave in a certain way behavioral yes. psychology we've seen this with covid and many other things absolutely I want to put a bleep over that word i don't know sorry about that no no it's all right it's uh, all but, right um uh the uh the, the, the and and the new age the hijacked new age element which right. is, you know um now i don't know about trump and everything else i i i did sort of go along with that for a while i then got very disheartened when he started talking about warp speed and all of this and uh with these things and and i thought i can't i can't follow i can't follow anything he says anymore because this has just been another con another trick another scam um but uh you know there are many that still say that he's part of the solution but when we look outside of ourselves to the white hats or to jesus or to anyone else then what's the point in us being here? Now, at this point, I'd love to bring in a, a little story because this has come up so many times in recent events with people where someone who's returned, for example, to Christianity mm. and its belief uh, in Jesus. And, and, and I'm not saying I don't believe in Jesus. I do believe he was a real being, as I've mentioned, I think. Yeah. And, and many, many others like the Buddha and so on. Mm. But now here we go. Here's a little story where people ask the question don't they like well if god's got us and he's going to save us all anyway then what's the point in us doing anything right doesn't that negate life doesn't that negate the challenge doesn't that negate growth doesn't that negate evolution what we're all here to do surely is to evolve and change and grow with the changing seasons and everything else and adapt and we are remarkably adaptive creatures we've seen that over and over again mm. on that note mm. i just mentioned a film i just recently watched called Nyad. diana Nyad, who swam for 60 hours straight from cuba to keys west in florida unbelievable film brilliant wow Billy foster and annette benning highly recommend it so getting back to a, the, a, a lot of breaststroke in that film i imagine uh no mostly front crawl i think she was doing all oh, right there we go i think <laughs> there we are. incredible absolutely amazing um so but getting back to it um when we when we do that when we look outside of ourselves we are we we're, we're negating what the possibility is for us mm. and so many people are saying well but you know that's not the that's not the key you know we we can't just do nothing we can't just observe all of this and and blame everyone else and 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 sit back and wait for this all knowing all great being this omnipresence being to to come and rescue that's not what it is. And this story, I think, completely uh, nails this. And that is a man in a boat a long, long time ago was sailing down the river or meandering down the river. He wasn't really sailing. It's a little mm. canoe he's in. 
All oh, right. And uh, it's, it's and already started lying from the beginning there with the sales and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so he's <laughs> he's uh, he, he's faced with a storm that's coming. You know, the rain starts getting harder, and uh, and someone on the riverbank says to him, "You might want to get out of your boat, mate. I've just read the weather forecast, and it's uh, not looking good. It's going to get worse." And you in that little canoe there, you're not gonna you're not gonna do well if you don't mm. get out now. And he just sits there very, you know, blase and says, uh, no, don't worry, God's got me. I'm okay. I know I've got my faith and everything will be all right. And uh, he keeps going. And then a boat, a bigger boat, one that can withstand the storm of the measure that was coming, comes alongside and says, you better get out of that boat. And the boat's taking on water, his little canoe's taking on water. And he says, no, don't worry, God's got me. I don't need to, I don't need to move. Everything's going to be fine. I'm just going to sit here and wait for God to rescue me. And he carries on down the river. The boat's taken on more water and he's starting to sink. And a helicopter comes over and uh, lowers a ladder. And uh, and it, and uh, someone's on a tannoy thing and says, uh, oh, yeah. get out of the water. Get, <laughs> you've get got out to of say, the water. Gotta... You must save yourself. <laughs> Come on now. My ladder is there. Cling on to it, mate. Don't muck about. Ex- Exactly. And a, bit uh, of dra- of course, a bit of drama he, there. He, you know, this paint and the he, he keeps going and ultimately he drowns. Oh, and uh, so he goes up to the heavens and he uh, he searches out for God, you know, very yeah. angry that God didn't save him. And uh, he goes yeah. up to God and says, now, why didn't you save me as you said you were going to? And God said, well, look, I gave you someone warning you on the riverbank. I sent yeah. a bigger boat that you'd have been OK on. I sent you a helicopter with a ladder. What did you want me to do? Put my hand down and lift you up into the heavens so the message is you've got to help yourself when you're given the messages now on that note angels if you look at the etymology of the it's messenger right okay um and uh so that's that's one story with a boat i'd love to quickly say another one with a boat around this again cleaning house it all cycles back as always the second one is about an indigenous man living on an island, you know, very, very simple, beautiful life, observing nature, fishing, not taking more than he needs, living in balance and accordingly with nature. And a guy from the West shows up and uh, starts watching this guy fishing and uh, he goes up to him and says, uh, mate, have you ever thought about getting a bigger boat? And uh, the guy in the in the in the little boat doing his his daily fishing for his meal that evening says, uh, "Now, why would I want to do that?" And so the other guy says, "Well, because then you could catch more fish and sell them to other people." And he's, and 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 what would I do after that? Well, then you could get a fleet of boats and create a business and sell more fish and make more money. And what's the ultimate objective of this? The other guy says. Well, then you can, you know, get to the age of 60 and retire with lots of money and not have to, you know, you could then live the life you want. And the the guy who's living the life in the little boat, just fishing for what he needs, turns around and says, right. So essentially what you're saying is I do all of that to live the life I'm already living at the end of it all. Yeah. (laughs) So in other words, sometimes we're doing stuff for the sake of doing stuff that hasn't actually made us happy or um you, you know it, it's a false prophecy yeah I, I mean essentially life is designed it gives us everything we need to live simply mm. all of this extra complexity and don't get me wrong i mean there's a lot of complexity in nature of course there is but actually Getting to the root of the matter of, of, of life and, and learning how to live in a way that will bring your soul peace and joy and harmony, mm. the the mechanisms for that are very simple. And what we've done in the West is we've we've convoluted so much and, and come up with all of these things that have ended up giving our autonomy away to others and our self-responsibility away to others in every area of our lives that's um, sort of important to us or or fundamental to our existence which such as health you mm. know and giving our, our our power away to doctors uh if you don't know your own body how can they know your body oh, um, right. yeah and can and, i and, can, yeah i was gonna can, can i ask you two questions about the um or a couple of questions about the two stories 
So story, yeah. story number one, how do you know when you're being given a message from, you know, in the theory of God coming down or a message from yourself and you're not waiting, you know, so that you're not waiting for the hand to come down and someone saying, oh, get out of the boat. And you're thinking, no, 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 it's fine. I can materialize through my own, you know, brain waves or I'm strong enough to row it. How do you how do you know that one is a somebody actually advising you good advice that may come from God, higher self, the universe, whatever, or it's just dumb advice that sounds good? So that's question. That's the first question. And I'll. It's it's a great question and it may not be a very satisfactory answer but uh you know in the in the extremes when you're offered help in a situation where you're otherwise going to perish mm. but how I he didn't guess. the man in the story didn't know he was going to perish did he he thought he was confident enough to carry on when the first guy said i'd get out of there because i've read the forecast mm. and, yeah well it, it, i mean it it ultimately is again as with all of what i think and feel at the moment is is up to the self to decide when that point is but if your boat's taking on water which by that point in the story yeah it wasn't started to sink and he's got a helicopter with a ladder i'd suggest yeah you know, it's, he's not seeing the signs it's common sense that uh that's a right. that's a that's a um you know gift from heaven where did that helicopter come from wow what a what a what a, a moment to be alive what a blessing to receive uh, rather than oh, I'm just going to be a stubborn guy and live by faith and do nothing here. Um, yeah. Okay. And- no, that's that. That's good. And the the, the island one. Um, what strikes me about that, and and I suppose there's a certain element there where you grow up to realise that actually you're ch- you're chasing nonsense. You know, the idea that the guy who's come over to the island says, "Oi." why don't you set up a business and you can have this massive business and earn a lot of money so that you can actually retire and just have quiet fishing. And the, the guy's fishing going, well, I'm already doing it. And <laughs> yes. let, let's face it, I, if I don't do all that business you've just said, I'd probably save 40 years and I can just carry on fishing. You know, it's almost as if when, when you reach something like 60, and I am 60 now, and I'm saying to myself, do you know what? I just want to sit in a, not all day long, but I want that quiet life, grow my own veg, look at nature, get back to stuff, because I'm cha- I've been chasing something which was, an, which was an illusion that would give me certain things. Although, of course, we live in a world in which you need a certain amount of security. But actually, mm. if I'd known really what I really want now, back 30, 40 years ago, um, then... I would have put the money into perhaps having a cabin in the woods rather than bricks and mortar in a street. And right. and and, but we all change, though, don't we? And that's yeah. life's journey. Well, let me put the question back to you then. If you'd known now what you knew, sorry, if you'd known then what you know now, mm. would you have lived your life? Yeah, and of Different. course, yeah, we did. We were all learning and growing and 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 well, learning. Well, that's the that's the thing. It's taken me now to get to mm. the point that what I know now, I do know now. I just wish yeah. I had the youth now of another, you know, youthful 40 years when I was in, my, you know, your age. Let's, so let's what say. was it? What was it, Richard, that sent you on the journey of what is not to discover what is back when you were young? I need that translated into English. What was what? What was what? What was it then? Yes. When you were young that yes. convinced you to go on the journey you did? To know, yeah. to then come to where you are to, now, well, and realise actually I didn't need all of that. Yeah, I didn't need all that. Well, I suppose for me, um, I have stuck very much. I mean, I've been, my life has been following what I wanted to do all the way through, and I didn't work for corporations, and I didn't work. For, I worked a little bit for other people, and then I realised very quickly what a dumb thing to do this is. I wanted to make films and I wanted to have this experience and that experience. I got into entertaining and all, all the various things I've done. So I look back and go, I don't really regret any of the things. I regret losing my eye and I regret, you know, troubles, but I worked through them. But actually, I've learned from all those experiences. So although I regret, regret in one way, I've actually learned a hell of a lot from it. And that's rounded me up. Um, 
And I wouldn't change it because I'm young enough and I still feel very young. And luckily, I'm, you know, flexible and, you, you know, from all the things I've done um, to be looking forward to greater hardship. I mean, I could sort of now just just take it easy to a degree and just sort of go, Do you know, I just sit on here and just talk to people and make some money off YouTube and blah, blah, blah. But actually, I, I, I want the, the stupidly, I want what people might think of the hardship of going out in the pouring rain trying to fix a fence because the pigs have got out and you know because it's so it's actually very rewarding and doing and enlightening and and absolutely enlightening i said but yes enlightening. oh enlight yeah enlightening and, and enli because and you're having to do it yourself so you're you're yeah in that learning you know, yeah and, and fighting with the elements is is when we watch films you know and when we when we suspend our disbelief i think they said in in the media classes you know when mm. we sit down and we 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 watch this movie and uh uh we watch others living the hero's the, life you know uh, yeah out in embracing the elements fighting with the elements when things are challenging yes and, and the ultimate payoff is that you survived it you 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 thrived through it you learned mm. how to not conquer but um assimilate and and grow with the challenges around you yes and but if we're watching somebody else doing it you're not doing it yourself uh, um, uh, you, you know, just took the words out of so, my mouth that's it yeah you're so, so, so why, separated why, you know, from there's, it there's a great meme that's going around on the internet right now around uh hunger games and uh other movies all the way through time where there's a an oppressive tyrannical control system going on and who do the audience always root for? They root for the underdog, right? The yes. uh, the people who have to challenge that system, have to overcome those challenges to yes. promote freedom and 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 a life where everyone can uh, basically live in in love again. Yes, uh, without this overarching uh, control system, and mm. uh, and and yet when it comes to the actual reality that we're faced with, people well, we all acquiesce and take certain medical interventions and and all the you know and go I to mean, work nine bottle. to five. Yeah, yeah, it, so it is utterly. But and the thing is now, and this is really you know, and I I feel very sort of one foot in, one foot out on this is a lot of people are watching videos of people say they want to go back to the land or live off grid or be independent, whichever way it is. And they're watching all these YouTube videos now, which are, and they're rooting for the people who are doing it. And they feel that they're part of it because they can leave a comment and maybe change what goes on, but they're not actually doing it. Mm. And right. it, I think, I think and, a lot of them will, will be inspired. Well, you know, it takes yeah, time. Yes. Yes, I, absolutely. Amazing. But it's it's still you're still behind a screen going. Oh, look at those people. They're so old. Oh, the hardship they're doing. Uh, put the kettle on and put the fire on. I'm a bit cold. <laughs> stick, you know. Oh, we've got another bill to pay. Oh, I'll pay that. And, oh, we won't go to bingo tonight because we can't afford it because we've had to pay that bill. And and you sort of it's like they're accepting second best so that they can watch the the life they would like through somebody else vicariously on the screen mm. and and that's not I, I mean it's a difficult one isn't it because some people physically can't I remember when I was doing my walking videos people said thank you for doing your walking videos because I physically can't get out um, and during the lockdown people were saying thanks for braving it all and, and all the criticism and actually bringing the outdoors in because we've all been told we're not allowed and we're too frightened to actually go out and, and brave it ourselves. So it, it is swings and roundabouts. Yes, I, and not to take anything away from anyone because obviously you had a lovely guest on recently who was talking about the big C mm. and uh, she said something that struck a, a really deep chord in my heart and that was around when you said, oh, you've been very brave. And she said, yeah. well, actually, uh, I see it that others have been really brave to 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 go down the other route, you know, with their health. And, yeah. And, and and go through all of these Trust the system and, and interventions that uh, ultimately when and as she said in Germany, when she came out and her daughter or her granddaughter or someone said to her, uh, someone in her family said to her, oh, you look really well. Uh, yeah. Just, well, surely that's the point of going that's, off the heels. Exactly. Somewhere. It's like, what did you um, expect me to do? So actually, that's beautiful, Richard, because this is this is so key to the self and what we're here to do is that you're not going to 
uh, we, we are a whole system inside and outside of us, if that makes sense. Mm, it does. We, we need all of it to 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 grow. We, we if we just and and not to take anything. I know that they're, they're especially right now after so many of these interventions and and mm. the way that the uh, the medical system has gone, that there are many people who have have um, uh, not the ability anymore to to get out and do what they want to do. So living vicariously, as you say, is is a great uh, a great way for them to still uh, live that partake. In the, you know and yeah. see it and and feel part of it, um, but for those that do are able bodied and everything else, uh, you know I would say you there's no one else but you to do it, mm. um, and the, the reward and people have the choice to 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 make to do that or not. I mean that that that's the yeah. other thing because my my an ex girlfriend of mine used to watch all these. Uh, these um, ready, steady cook or um, all these ones where they cook these amazing gourmet meals and she would watch this and she said, oh, I'd love to do that. I'd love to. But she never did it really. Mm. And she she called it food porn because it was all this beautiful coloured food and stuff. And and I would say, well, why don't you do this? Oh, I can't be asked in the end of the day. But she wanted to, but, but she was happy. You know, she'd made that decision. It's lovely to see it, but actually I'm actually... So, ultimately it still resides with you to make the choice that you know actually i don't want to go out there in the middle of the night with the freezing cold trying to mend a fence so that the cattle can't get out it's it's um, funny that this come up because uh myself I've, i'm sat near my friend andrew and on the weekend when it, the coldest day of the week i think it was saturday yes uh you know and the, the cobwebs were those lovely icicles on the cobwebs oh yeah beautiful it was beautiful and uh, we went out and we were cooking steak by a spring. Wow. Um, and uh, the people in the cars coming past, you know, just just for that moment, you know, aside from that, we're fr- half freezing to death. <laughs> but to watch their faces is weird. To yes. Me. Who are these mad idiots? <laughs> But that's it. But sometimes, you know, you do that. I mean, that is that because you've got the security of going, well, actually, if it gets really tough, I can go back home and go inside. But you you go out there, don't you? And you just do sometimes. And it's nice to do slightly mad uh, barking things. So you go, wow, actually, especially if you've got friends with you. Yeah. Or, you know, or your mood is up. I'm just I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to go for a 10 mile walk. Um, in the freezing, you know, pouring rain, and then you come back and you just feel so proud of yourself. Absolutely. That's it. It cultivates that spirit. You know, I can do this. It's a can mm. attitude. And also the reward when you get into a nice cosy place next to the fire or, you know, yeah. stand by the agar or the, the oven or whatever, and just have a cup of tea. And that that feeling of like, well, I've done that and now I deserve this. And uh, yeah. one of the things I did want to tap into again around cleaning house, but it's essentially uh, something that's happened in the world for a long time now. And that's this um, uh, we've been groomed into a world of instant gratification yes uh where most things are done for us we did touch on this last time but but we didn't go to this point of what we want to do i think is move back to a world of delayed gratification mm. which is far more rewarding um oh absolutely so so much i mean i'll let me give you a story I'm sorry this is your interview and i'm sort of interrupting bits I, of I, I i love it i think conversation is far better than just one person constantly you know yeah anyway. well it is nice i have to say it's nice for me because normally i just sit here and just nod my head and go oh yeah that's interesting oh how fascinating that is um but <laughs> so <laughs> um when i moved into this this very house 33 years ago my we moved it we had no money we but we we um we came from a flat and we had a now um i've got to remember the term for it a um Oh, an old-fashioned washing machine, which was a spin dryer, uh, and a and a thing that, that turned uh, agitated the washing. You put the washing in by hand, you had to fiddle about with it. You had these big um, wooden what, um, tongs, and you'd lift them out, put them into the spin dryer, and then you put a hose into the sink. But loads of uh, old people my generation would know what the hell I'm talking about. And we wanted one of these glamorous front-loading <laughs> washing machines that you go shove it in turn it on and walk away but we couldn't it was a it was a sort of almost two-man job and you're mucking about with this and more water and it's all splashing on the floor anyway eventually 
We saved up the money and we bought one of these things and my, we appreciated it. Like, and every time I put something in the washing machine now, I appreciate that we haven't, at the time I've saved, it does it itself, what a wonderful thing. Mm. When my son moved into his first house, he had everything already there. Washing machine, a, a, a spin dryer, um, everything. A, a dishwasher mm. for him and his wife, a dishwasher. And you go, there's nothing left to look forward to, is there? <laughs> but when you have it like this, what have you got to look forward to? How do you appreciate? I mean, we had televisions that were rented. Mm. And you p went off and paid for the rent, you know, from Rumbelows and these companies that no longer exist. And then one day we could have actually afforded to buy one. And it, it, there is, you're so right. Well, you know, with you the electric, when people used to go with their little meter stick to the to the yeah. shop put some more on the meter put some more but even that you know well you know do you need the the central heating on all overnight or do you just get a warmer duvet cover you know and yeah. actually that feeling of when you get into a cold bed and you make it warm with your body absolutely heat and everything there's so many things that nate and and this you know we did again touch on this last time but the comfort thing is is a false ally yes yeah. um because actually our body needs these changing states to adapt to and 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 have excitement and reward and and dopamine hits that are through our effort not our yeah. um not a like or <laughs> you know yeah. oh somebody somebody liked my video oh marvelous so okay, okay this may again uh, not be that popular but uh in because we're approaching the festive season but mm. um uh, in so many e other areas of how we clean house, well, let's stop participating in the fake stuff. I mean, Christmas is a free month advertising fair for retailers and advertising merchants that has nothing to do with the birth of the Messiah or anything. And I would wager that he was not born on December 25th. Um, the calendar has been manipulated and that's, you know, to keep us all in a state of confusion. Um, if we don't know uh, our own um, circadian rhythm and natural rhythm, uh, with the seasons, with the with with light, with the sun coming up and with the moon coming up, and so on. How do we know where we are? We're yeah. always in a state of confusion, and that's you know the uh, what what's the, the the Gregorian calendar that we're living in is not a true calendar at all. We should be following the moon cycle, which would give us thirteen months of twenty eight days with one day out of time, July twenty fifth, and that's what uh, certain people are now operating uh, with, which is a far more um, balanced calendar um if you look at you know the, the month's names and this goes back to the language and how that's all been completely distorted you've got september what's sept in latin is seven and oct is eight and then you've but where's where's 11 and 12 <laughs> no, yeah november and december is nine and ten but where's 11 and 12 uh you go back to to the start with january and february um the, the okay let me go to my notes here quickly because actually uh we've just a bit and as you do that just to yeah. touch on the festive thing and 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 saying you, you know d d don't celebrate i mean i i very much i'm not um somebody who particularly follows um any well i don't follow any religion as such or anything that's been um you know i would say that you could celebrate any any time at any day every day is a celebration in one way that, yeah you know yeah well that's that, that's the that's the, i mean leap out of bed for the new day because it's yeah it's amazing to be alive you know uh, exactly but it, it is nice it is nice to to have something at the end of a year however you've defined the calendar mm. but you're right i mean we've fallen into the commercial world of buying all these trinkets and we don't we, you know nobody well look nobody. look at look at how unhealthy it is mm. you know eat yourself until you you can't think straight and have to lie down for three hours and drink yourself into a stupor and uh and you, but, but I'll, I'll, yeah, i will push back a little bit on that because if you think of the uh, 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 if you think of before farming and we were having global crops and all the rest of it you go back to sort of a few hundred years people would try to eat and fatten up over the winter during the winter yeah um because you you had what do they call it the big hunger 
the big hunger where crops aren't growing and you've salted your... Yeah, uh, fair, fair enough, but I'm sure they were eating uh, meat. Yes. And, yes, uh, no, absolutely. They've gone out I, and hunted rather than chocolates and... Um, yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not degreeing that, I, absolutely. <laughs> so if people, if people were not eating all this highly processed crap and, and purely that, then I would agree. But, you know... At the end of the day, each their own. It's it's everybody else's funeral, so yeah, well, um, I, that's very and true. in moderation. And and all I can do is, and all you can do, all any of us can do is offer is offer our advice our, in whatever way we opi- it, yeah. you know our opinion on it. Um, this this again, you know, in terms of uh, I, I don't even like celebrating birthdays anymore. You know, like uh, if if I, I I love social occasions and being with friends and celebrating life, but uh, celebrating getting one year. Uh, older is not something that uh, that really resonates anymore with me. Um, in I, you know, if we called it "Be Earth Day" when we were put on this earth, and um, you know, there, there, there are just so many little things that we can reimagine and make them better. In my mind, mm. yeah. Um, I mean, take out the commercial side of things, and I think all you know, it's the pressure, isn't it? It's the pressure for St. Valentine's Day, for example, and then you go. And and actually, you mostly have the most miserable meal because you sit around in a restaurant that's full of pe- full of couples who very rarely go out, and they're all having the same nonsense, and they've all got these cheap flowers from Deathsco, and you know they're all sort of sitting there going Deathsco, I like that, that. Yeah. yeah, and uh, <laughs> all die, um, and they, you know, whatever it is, they're eating, and they're, you know, it's whereas if it's spontaneous, darling, I'm going to take you out tonight. We're just going to go and have a steak somewhere, and what have you. It's like, oh, that's nice. But it's that anticipation. Oh yes, it's that date on the diary. We have to do something. Oh, you've to touched be... yeah, exactly. You've touched on something else that's magical. There, isn't it? The the, uh, the spark of spontaneity, mm. uh, and and telling someone you love them when they least expect it. Uh, yes, doing something surprising. Um, yes, and we can do that every day at any moment. You don't need the yeah. state to organise it for you. I mean, how <laughs> yes. depressing is that? <laughs> yes, it's like, right. oh, today is the only day you can say to your loved one that you love them. Well, and then you oh. and you're also, you know, you're buying all of their their all right, their tats. What it is, you know, the yes. cards with the horrible little oh. poems and things on them, and you know, yeah. cheap and nasty and plastic, plastic yeah. culture. Uh, yeah. This this now cycles back to Terence McKenna. Are you familiar with this guy? Um, he's no longer with us, sadly, because he was a beautiful, beautiful uh, psychedelic explorer. Um, and he said at one point, you know, things are going to get really, really weird. Um, and he knew a lot of what has started. When, when was he around? Uh, not that long ago. Um, right. He was alive until, I, I think... Um, you know, early 2000s, if not late 90s. Um, right. Oh, okay. So when he says things are getting weird, he's like, you know, it's yeah. Something... But I mean, he 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 was he was way out. You know, I mean, he he'd explored with uh, a lot of psychedelic plants and uh, what what um, you know, rather than the word psychedelic, which has also now got this sort of hippie mindedness idea about it. Why not call them teacher plants because they have a consciousness and actually when you take them with respect and honor the plants own wisdom, they are there to offer you a lot of guidance and they shouldn't be taken lightly. They shouldn't Mm. be taken just as uh, um, entertainment. They are there for uh, your own inner world to explore itself and to uh, reimagine your own ideas and ideals in this reality that we all find ourselves in. I've worked with them quite a lot myself and they've been a, a great help in in deciphering more about, you know, uh, from one culture to the next. And again, this is Terence McKenna, not myself, but but something I've noticed through his own teachings and, and through the plants is that when you step outside of one culture into another. So this is why traveling is so good for the soul, so good for the being, is that uh, <laughs> You know the the rules and the regulations and the what's legal and what's not and all of those things is completely different from somewhere yeah. else. So then it makes you think like, well, what is right from wrong? What is mm. actually moral or ethical? And you have to cultivate that within yourself or remember because it's actually within you innately. But you have to remember it for yourself. Yeah. Um, and again, it always comes back to do no harm as much as possible. Um, but a good reason why a one world government with one idea globally 
is it's not a terrible such a idea. Good idea. Yeah, because <laughs> if you travel around and you meet an indigenous population who live perfectly happily in their environment, doing their certain things, it might not be how you want to live, but you can see how happy they are and and what they get from different plants and and different laws and things, and they celebrate perhaps nature a bit more uh, and whatever it is, and you have a huge respect. And then you, as you say, you can come back and go. Why aren't we doing a bit more of that? Because these four walls and straight lines and artificial light and electric... It, it promotes it promotes finding the middle path. Mm. Because you get to see all sides of the equation. The extreme on the left, the extreme on the right. One place is communist, one place is capitalist, one place is, you know, slightly out of the system altogether. Like Costa Rica doesn't have an army now. Uh, it's a beautiful place where there are lots of... Uh, conscious minded individuals and by conscious minded, you know, everyone's conscious, but there's a lot mm. of the world that has fallen into unconsciousness. Yeah. Uh, and that's through the occult knowledge being hidden. Um, and all of the bread and circuses and the, you know, the idea that actually uh, people are very scared to sit and and do the inner work and be still and, and recognize what their triggers are and, and, and what brings them back to who they truly are, which you asked the question last time. I mean, how do, how do people do that? Uh, well, again, it's practices. You know, you have to quieten the mind. Mm. The monkey mind is telling you so many things. It's not you. And, if, and, and also, if you're working all the hours God sends, yeah, so and you've got no time to recognize what it is that makes you happy and joyful and 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 uh, and feel that sense of uh, aliveness within you. Um, you know, you're not your job. You're not your reputation. You're not uh, just a mother or a father. You're a whole system of all systems within you. Is is is, is the knowledge of everything is laying within you, dormant. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, was it Shakespeare who said the whole world is a stage and we're merely the actors, the players um, in seven ages. And uh, right now we're at the end of the procession of the equinoxes, which is 26,000 year cycle, give or take a few years. And uh, every time that happens, there's an unveiling. So the apocalypse, if you will, the, uh, the, the, the layers of illusions that we've all fallen under start to reveal themselves. And we come back to what is uh and this is the awareness that's that's rising on the that's planet going. would suggest you know and uh um we we you know i definitely want to keep stressing the fact that we need to be kind to others who don't see it yet you know and see yes. it's perfect because again that's your inner world reflecting if you if you treat them like they're idiots and stupid and so on then you're only gonna uh infuse it in, um enrage them and uh and and put them in more fear you know if you're if you're if your way of tra i did this years ago you know trying to go up to people and say there's something wrong in the world and you've got yes. to take them Can't away. You see it you fool yeah yeah and and it just has the opposite effect from what you you're wishing to do um yes you know and uh so planting seeds in a, in a very very kind way is is the best way to go and and, and look for the positives among each other not the negatives i mean yes. we've conditioned over again terence mckenna said we've we've been conditioned for ten thousand years with bad behavior and reprogramming is not easy no one said it was easy no but if we don't do the work then we know where we're going at this point there's no there's no alternative really to uh doing the work and if we want to continue as a species and leave a world worth living for our, our blessed children and their grandchildren and so on. You know, we've got to, we've got to turn this around. Um, once you do the inner work, once you've regained some knowledge about how things operate, once you've regained your sovereign mindset and your attitude, let me ask you a question quickly, Richard. Okay. Do you remember your national insurance number? <laughs> I do. I can't tell you. Obviously, no, because... got, yeah, I mean, no, don't say it out loud. But um, uh... B4 double seven three nine eight two H slash five. <laughs> Double, Someone, someone's five, gonna go and <laughs> yeah check that it's five 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 nine seven two one double three <laughs> but see that that's uh and and do you remember your uh credit score your credit rating no i don't think i've never asked for my credit rating right okay that c is a sovereign mindset because you're, well, you're not I, you're not begging for someone how dare anyone say that you're worthy of of yeah. This amount, well, I, that amount. I, I, I mean, I, I haven't borrowed much. I hated borrowing money. I had to borrow money for the mortgage and I managed to pay it off. But everything I would I would save. It's that thing it goes back to that thing. I would save up for it, buy it, 
use it until it do- I mean, I bought my van and um, somebody said, oh, you could trade that in and get something else. I said, well, I don't trade it in. I will drive that van until it's... You know, until it absolutely the wheels fall off and the steering wheels roll down the road and the, it, all of that. Uh, because that's just my... That's the way I work. Now, listen, um, we've only got a few minutes left in my little preferred slotted time. I want to find out what you're doing on YouTube. Right, well, uh, we've... Just... Uh, and before you say that, we'll have to... Obviously, we've missed out a number of your things that you want to talk about. So will you come back on again? Oh, absolutely. And, because yeah, you but... are a bundle of energy and <laughs> wisdom. And, you know, every now and again, we need to shove that in people's faces. So what are... Because there's things like breath work we haven't talked about and the, and the inner pharmacy we've not spoken about, um, which probably is a whole video on it in and of itself. But what are you doing on YouTube? Okay, so we've just we've just literally started this and we're going after the algorithm, if you will, which isn't as we think it is a lot of people anyway, which is, Mm. oh, it's coming after us if we say something. Yes, we've got to be careful with certain things like the big C and so on. But actually, the way to cultivate a large audience is to play to the audience you want to play to. So we're rebranding all of what we're doing towards that with uh, an interactive idea. So. How do we empower each other? How do we lift up? How do we uplift each other? And that is to promote challenging each other to uh, make films of these empowering challenges, such as, you know, random acts of kindness without, I don't want it to be trite, you know, where you're going up Mm. to a homeless person going, here's a sandwich or something, because that's horrible. Mm. Film that sort of thing. Don't do that. I don't like tuna anyway. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, you know, go and knock on a next door neighbor's uh door and see if they want a bobber job or a handyman for another word uh and uh ask but are you are you gonna then film that well yeah if 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 they're happy to obviously you've got to ask them if they're happy to yeah but then you'd film you know you do these jobs for people and maybe they'll make you a cup of tea and you have a little conversation and getting back into your local area meeting Mm. and greeting and doing kind things for one another helping each other out there used to be a great platform in bristol called helpful peeps started um maybe 10 years ago now and it, it 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 he's he's gone off and done a whole um monk lifestyle since so the whole thing sort of fell apart so he but... was he was helping lots of people he got pissed off with that and now he's sitting in a cell <laughs> in a monastery somewhere going oh, i wish i'd never bothered well, with all of that i don't know i think he is still helping people but it's evolved oh, right. into something else yeah uh, but it was called helpful peeps and essentially it was an online thing where you just type in i need help uh, fixing my car any mechanically minded people please do that in return i can fix your computer right. or i can come and mow your lawn or whatever it may be you know it's a kind of a bit of a bartering thing exactly and doing kind rather of than just going oh i need my car fixed and can you do it in six months time and then in another six months time and actually the tires are flat they need you know because you, you could see that people would take advantage of that yeah nasty yeah. people exactly evil so, nasty people so that so so the whole idea of what we're doing now on youtube is this is get it, it, that sort of thing and in ch- and challenges that empower the individuals as well so you know learn learn an instrument a musical instrument music is incredibly important in this time to uplift us and mm. change the the message of music that has been going through the pop industry for so long mm. you know regarding i can't live if living is without you and all of that kind of crap to Mm. empowering messages and uh again it's all about upliftment we're all fighting a hard battle that no one else knows anything about so why not honor each other's battle within ourselves by uplift knowing honoring the fact that that is a hard battle we lift each other up through love and support and and helping where we can if we if you see someone in need of help and you can help and you don't help Yes, and that's on you. You know, like the most. Yeah, that's very unhonorable. That's not honorable at all. Yeah, and uh, and courage in the world right now is what's needed. And what is true courage? Learning to love in each moment with your whole heart. That's what true courage is. Not not shying away from it. Not shying away from the messiness. Not shying away from those in need. Head on, straightforward. Help where you can, every moment you can. Obviously, with time for looking after the self, rest and so on. That's, yes, of course. You can only be the best you can be for others when you look after yourself. But with that, when you when you're doing that, but don't. But to, clearly, you don't want to overstretch yourself and you, you know suddenly go. Oh, I've got to do this. I've got to be as helpful. So I'm going to help 99 people today and then end. No, up. no, no. Of course, yeah. yeah there's. I, I'm just saying it because yeah. you know how some people yeah. get very obsessive with things and yeah. and um, and and overdo it. Yeah. 
Uh, so, so, you know, and there are things that can help us do this. If we start to learn to live by certain principles, A, the golden rule, do no harm. That one is mm. key. You know, it's, if everyone does that, of course, we're promoting a better world for each other and ourselves. Yeah. Um, the second one would be learn to leave the space you operate in better than you found it, or at least mm. as well as you found it. Third one would be do as you say you're going to do. And then there are four agreements written by Don Miguel Ruiz, which will really help with this. The first one is don't take anything personally. All right. Nothing others do is because of you. It's their own makeup that's going on in their own world, their own reality that they're trying to work through. So don't take it personally. Yeah. Don't make assumptions, which sort of, you know, it's related to that. You know, don't make assumptions that someone's annoyed with you just because they've made a flippant remark. Let it yeah. wash over. Don't yeah. take it to heart. Um be impeccable with your word as much as possible. Now, we all make mistakes, but all we can do is agree with ourselves to be better as much as we can day by day. That's what this is about, isn't it? Surely it's learning yeah. to be better with ourselves and with each other, learning how to communicate more effectively that so we can enter states of coherence, getting to the root of issues, getting to the root of the challenges that we all face so that we can then hold the feet of the counselors to the fire Make mm. them aware that they are under scrutiny and that they work, for, remind them continuously that they work for us, not for those that are telling them what to do from above. Oh, That's I do try to do that in my videos, but believe yeah. me. So, so um, was that, that was the thing. three? Was That's that the key thing that everyone in community has to do now. Yes. Actually participate. I know they're boring as hell. I've been through a lot of them myself, but go to their meetings, interject. They'll say, you've only got two questions at the end. No. Yeah. Use your voice. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Mm. Get in their faces and tell them this will not stand. You mm. are going to be put on notice if you don't honor what your role is as a public servant. It's not serving these people who are telling you what to do from government. The government yes. has got out of control. If you don't think that by now, then I don't know where you are, but you're not on this planet. Uh, no, well, and, not in this country anyway. Yeah. I, so the fourth agreement... So what did we have? We had be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. And the fourth one, very simply, again, they're all sort of interconnected. Always do your best. That's all yeah. anyone can ask of you. Anyone can ask of anyone is that. Um, if we learn well, those and those, those principles, and this is what we're trying to do with the YouTube channel by coming through with all of this, uh, helping each other be um, uh, live by their word you know to own up when they make a mistake to be vulnerably honest when they're suffering when they're when they're finding things hard when they when they need support um and this is the great thing with technology is that we can we can utilize use it, it for us absolutely it's, what is what 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 is the youtube channel called dragonfly pictures 777 dragon fly i'm writing it down gives other people a chance to write it down as well pictures yeah. um while you're doing that we also have seven 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 yeah as in the number as in actual seven 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 as in seven 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 yeah. num numbers yeah yeah, yeah. brilliant uh, okay and i will leave the link in the description of course if i may very quickly the other thing that we're we're going to continue to expand and evolve this year is uh, or next year now uh is the grounding garden gathering events where we're promoting um social commentators such as yourself comedians musicians djs and healers or rather facilitators of healing to come because mm, you heal yourself obviously yeah yeah because you heal yourself you don't you're not healed by another you have to you have to accept that that's your your own role to heal yourself but people who can facilitate who bring all sorts of different things like tesla machines bioresonance machines biodiagnostics machines uh tuning forks uh buy one get bowls. one free machines yeah <laughs> they're always good <laughs> Uh, bowls, buy one, put singing, one back machine. singing bowls um and, and and many other things beside that we could and 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 i will get you and workshops Rob, for children learning how to yes, plant and seed and and all of these things that we can all do so much community so much we'll we'll do another video we'll okay. do another in the new year <laughs> when you've got when you've got some dates in the diary and you've got things to promote and you've got people to tell and you you know you've got something coming up let's do that may i finish with two things very very briefly go on all right so khalil gabran Work is love made visible. Read some Khalil Kil Gibran. He'll remind you of what beauty how, is. How do you spell that? Uh, K-A-H-L-I-L. And then oh, yeah, Gibran. G-I-B-R-A-N. Uh, G-I-B-R-A-N. 
and then um yeah learn how to learn how to reconnect with your inner child and return to states of play goof off be silly in your house oh no i do it. that believe yeah. you me and learn That's, how to do, I, learn how to do it in front of others in the supermarket just do a silly jig when you're waiting in the queue and try and get i tell you here's just, just to, to end then just to end then you mentioned supermarket doing something not that i've been in a supermarket for a long long time and people shouldn't go there it's entirely up to them of course i'm not telling what people what to do but if you want to stay healthy don't eat the food um at uh, one time, my son Stanley came round um, and I said to him, when we go in the supermarket, we are only going to walk in a straight line and turn 90 degrees. And we're <laughs> going to go around that supermarket and get everything. And we both did it, one behind the other. Brilliant. Of course, at first, nobody quite noticed, but eventually they do. It, it, yeah, uh, and have fun and, with it. You know, and you it, just it, had fun with it. Yeah. And then if you smiled at people, they smile back, but they're a bit worried. Oh, and please, smile please, back. please smile at the children. Yeah. You know? They need yeah. they need to know that we're not all a threat. Yeah, they're absolutely. being convinced that we are in schools yeah. now at this point. Yeah. If you can get them out of school, it's an indoctrination. Yeah. Uh, David Edelman is great. But not in a not in a that. black van in a sack. That's no. not how you get kids out of a school. Just you know, with a smile. <laughs> Hi, kid. Come with yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not what Rob meant. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, no, I'm it's your child. It's guy. your child. Don't get somebody else's child out of yeah. school. I mean, you know, you've got to be very careful here. All right, Richard. Um, very last thing then. Is, oh, another uh, last thing eh? is is a quote from Bill Hicks, who uh, who who I give credit to waking me up a long time ago or starting my. I'm not awake. None of us are. Yeah. We're all awakening. Yeah. Um, and we'd be very very arrogant to think that we're above or or or, or better than anyone else. No, we're not. Yeah. Uh, Go on, so what's the quote? Your hips is this. Life is just a ride. It goes up and down and around and around. It's very brightly coloured. It's got frills and chills and it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time. They begin to question. They begin to remember. It's just a ride. And we can change it any time we like. It's just a choice right here, right now, between love and fear. People who want fear want you to put bigger locks on your doors. Do crazy shit. Buy guns. Close yourself off from each other. People who want love instead see us all as one. I'll tell you how we can change the world, change the ride to a better ride. Transfer all of those millions and billions and trillions or anything with aliens on the end of it from weapons and defense to clothing and feeding and housing the poor of this world, which it would countless times over, not one human being excluded. And we can all explore space, both inner and outer, together, forever, in peace. Aho. There you go. Beautiful. Rob, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and giving us uh, all of that wonderful energy and hope and um, useful information for all of us here who are looking around slightly confused about what life is all about. It's been absolutely brilliant. Well, we're um, all mad here, but well, we're all mad. Sense, we gotta, join us. You know, let's, let's be mad. Let's not be autonomous robots and anymore. It's boring. Fantastic. So uh, <laughs> Dragonfly Pictures 777. Remember to put the at sign and whatever um, and go and check it out on YouTube. But the link will be in the description anyway. And of course, the uh, garden at uh, the grounding garden gatherings dot com. Uh, bare feet required, I imagine. Yes. Um, which, if you if you don't have Jeez bare feet, off. bring bare hands, um, <laughs> or bare bottoms. We don't really mind, um, <laughs> as long as you can ground yourself. It doesn't. Oh, really you matter, just remind. Watch Saving Grace if you've never seen that movie. Saving oh, okay. absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Uh, until next time, thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That the lovely uh, Rob of Bobaloo, a joy. Um, he will be back in the new year and if you want to get in touch with him go and check him out until the next time thank you Richard thank you. I'm looking forward to doing a video with you in nature yes yeah. we will do that yeah. we will do that we will pick the wettest miserablest nastiest day and we will do it inside a uh, lovely warm caravan wearing <laughs> Russian hats <laughs> wearing Russian hats whatever <laughs> um, absolutely um, there you are ladies and gentlemen I'll be back with more monologues and what have you and more wonderful guests like Rob um, until then from Rob and I back to you thank you for watching goodbye